Recently, I've been trying out different terminals and trying to figure out which one works best for me. And in the process of trying these terminals, I've made videos on the ones that I've looked into. You might have seen them. One was from when I went from Alacrity, which is a really great terminal based in Rust, by the way, to Kitty, which is a really interesting terminal that's also very influential in the terminal space through Kitty's graphics protocol. I also made a video on a terminal tier list, which was obviously very well received and not controversial at all. And through my searches for terminals, I have noticed comments popping up all the time talking about this one terminal in particular. Every single time someone says it, it's all about ghosty, ghosty this, ghosty that. And I actually had to look into this and think, what the hell is ghosty? So I got an invite to the ghosty beta, the most exclusive terminal there is right now. That's right. I'm in the cool kids club, baby. We're going to talk about ghosty, what it is, what it aims to be, and why it's so interesting as a terminal emulator in the space full of terminal emulators. Let's get into it. So after seeing all of your comments talking about the Ghosty Terminal Emulator, I had to get invited to the beta. So I hopped into Ghosty's Discord, which is how you get an invite to the beta. I'll link it down below. And eventually I got invited to Ghosty's beta. So I'm in, I get to use this cool, new, exciting Terminal Emulator. So let's check it out. So what is Ghostly exactly? Ghostly is, according to Mitchell Hashimoto, who by the way, was a creator of HashiCorp and made some amazing things like Terraform. So if you want dev tooling and you want someone to trust, he's a guy I would trust with dev tooling. Ghosty is a cross-platform GPU accelerated terminal emulator that aims to push the boundaries of what is possible with a terminal emulator by exposing modern opt-in features that enable CLI tool developers to build modern feature-rich interactive applications. So let's tease this apart a little bit. I think at the end of the day, Ghosty is made to be a new and exciting terminal emulator that is made to sort of push what is possible today with terminal emulators. Right now it's just about like reading text, maybe rendering some images, but I think what Mitchell wants to do here is create something new and interesting that people will want to develop more interesting things for. He even mentions it in his GitHub repository. There are a number of excellent terminal emulator options that exist today. The unique goal of Ghosty is to have a platform for experimenting with modern, optional, and non-standards compliant features to enhance the capability of CLI applications. So the premise here is that Ghosty aims to be something different, something more than just a terminal emulator. So let's check it out. I've installed it on my system, which is Arch, by the way, and we're going to poke around a little bit. We're going to check out the configuration, some of its interesting features, and something that I think makes Ghosty stand out amongst all the other terminal emulators that I think is truly amazing. So stick around to check that out. Now, of course, Ghosty is still in beta, but we implement most of the features you'd expect for a daily driver. And of course, Ghosty has so many features. I've installed it on my machine. I am using Arch by the way, and there's an AUR package after you were invited to the GitHub repo, you can download the AUR package. By the way, Mitchell did tell me I could show the GitHub repository. I'm not going to look into any of the code, but I can show the repository. So this is okay. I did get permission to show this. Now to install Ghosty, it's actually pretty simple. We can just use our favorite package manager. Again, I'm on Arch, so we can just install Ghosty. And Ghosty points to the Ghosty Git AUR package. And for me, since I'm active and invited to the GitHub repository, the organization organization that Ghosty uses GitHub for, I have access to this package so I can download it and install it on my system. And I would assume this is exactly how it would work when Ghosty is released publicly. And there you go, Ghosty is installed on my system. But surprise, I'm actually already using Ghosty. You see, this right here is Ghosty, the terminal emulator that is in private beta only access right now. It looks pretty normal, right? Well, that's part of the point. Ghosty is at the base, a minimal terminal emulator. It is performance, it's easy to configure, and it's fun to use. Let's poke around a little bit. So for starters, let's check out Ghosty's CLI. It comes with a CLI that you can use. And if you type Ghosty dash dash help, you see all the commands that you could possibly use. Now, these are all really interesting and fun to use, and you can actually compose things onto these commands. Let's show this off a little bit. Now, if we type Ghosty, plus version, we can see some of the build configuration, all this stuff, like a little bit more low level kind of things that Ghosty is using for us. I'm not sure if this will be in the public release, but this is good to see, especially someone who might be hacking on this terminal and trying to build applications for it. Nice to see. Ghosty also comes with a lot of the normal stuff you would expect from a terminal, right? You can open a new tab, you can close these tabs, you can open a new pane, you can then close these panes. All this stuff is normal and everything you would expect out of a daily driving terminal that is in public release. 
release. Again, this is only a beta and it already looks this good. Back to the CLI, one of the fun things you can do is go to Ghosty and type plus list keybinds. Now this is a fun way to sort of check out what is currently bound to hotkeys in Ghosty. Something fun that I like to do is actually pipe all these outputs to FZF. So when I check out these keybinds, I can then type like, hmm, what is it to open a new tab? And I can fuzzily find opening a new tab. These are all the keybinds that actually deal with opening tabs and traversing tabs. So that's an easy way to sort of discover what's going on with Ghosty with its keybinds. And something else that's actually pretty interesting is you notice here that there's a keybind control shift and comma that will reload our config, which is really helpful and will come in use very, very soon. So another interesting feature that you would want to see in any terminal emulator is the ease of configuring its color scheme. Now for me, I'm obviously a cat poochine man. So I want to install cat poochin on everything that I have on my system immediately. No questions asked. So does ghosty support cat poochin? Well, the short answer is hell yeah. The long answer is it supports a lot of different color schemes. So if we type ghosty, we get into our CLI again and we can type plus list themes this will list all of the color schemes that are available for Ghosty. But why does Ghosty have so many color schemes? Well, because Ghosty's color schemes are actually a part of the iTerm2 color schemes. Now, this is a huge set of color themes for all kinds of terminals. So any color scheme that's available in iTerm2 will soon be available for Ghosty and vice versa. Anyone who creates a color scheme for Ghosty, it will be available to dozens of other terminals through the iTerm2 color schemes. And of course, you can download and install any color scheme that you would like Groovebox included, but I love Capuchin, so I'm using Capuchin. Now you may ask, how do you actually add Capuchin as your color theme to Ghosty? Well, Ghosty has a pretty minimal and straightforward configuration. It's stored in the default config folder, which is .config on your home, Ghosty config. That is your configuration file. Now, after you find your theme in the theme selection sort of thing that we just saw in the CLI, we could type theme equals and put that entry right here. And that will actually update our theme. So let's check out some of the um, auto loading features here. So if I do, um, let's see, I this is how I normally look for my themes. I do ghosty plus list themes and I'd pipe that to FZF. Now I can type for, I don't know, Groovebox. So we have Groovebox dark. Okay, great. So now I can copy Groovebox Dark and then open my configuration and I can set my theme to Groovebox Dark. Now, if I hit Shift, Control, Comma, it will update my config and now I have Groovebox Dark. Pretty nice. The configuration aspect of Ghosty is really straightforward and fun to use. Now, of course, I don't actually want to use Groovebox Dark because I have Capuchin. I'm a Capuchin man. So I'm going to use Capuchin instead. Now I can shift control comma, and there we go. I've reloaded my config. Now continuing on the CLI, if we wanna look at more of our configuration options, we can type ghosty plus show dash config. And this is the config that we currently have set up for ourselves. This palette stuff is our color palette. As you would imagine, it is Capuchin Mocha. We have our cursor color, the command, click repeat interval, and all these other things that we've set up in our config file. But what's interesting here is you can compose actions with extra options. So we can do show config, but we can also pass the defaults flag. I probably got this wrong. I think I typed it wrong. Yes, I did. But Ghosty will tell me that I did the wrong thing and I can guess, I believe it's default. Yeah. So if I add dash dash default to any command, it will show me all the default values for these things. So this is my configuration with all the default values added in. And once again, if I want to discover some interesting options for configuration, I can pipe this to FZF and say, I don't know if I want to remove my title bar. Okay. There's a GTK title bar option. I can try that one out. And that's just a nice way to sort of like look around all the options and all the keybinds and all the things that you would want. And it just, I don't know, it's just fun to use. Now, another thing you might want from your terminal and not everyone wants this, but I think at least some people do is ligatures and nerd fonts. A lot of people use nerd fonts and ligatures in their terminals, and you would want to see this out of any modern terminal emulator. And I have good news for you. Ghosty supports nerd fonts and ligatures out of the box. So the CLR fonts, we can go to the ghosty CLI again and type ghosty plus list fonts. This will list all of the fonts that Ghosty supports that are installed in our system. So we can, again, if you want, go to pipe to FCF and we can search our favorite fonts. In this example, I'm going to use Cascadia Cove's nerd font. Now I already have this set up in my configuration. So I'm going to uncomment this line to actually show off Cascadia Cove, which has ligatures and it's a nerd font. It's really, really cool. So I can comment out my current font and uncomment Cascadia Cove. Now I can do shift control comma. And there we go. We have already switched our font. Isn't this nice? And what's cool is this supports ligatures, like I said, out of the box. So if I just start typing a popular ligature that I want to see, there we go. That is one ligature. Here's another one. 
and another ligature. They're all over the place. The ligatures are supported out of the box. The rendering is fantastic. This is a really strong suit of Ghosty. Now, of course, another thing you would want out of your terminal emulator is performance. That's something that I think a lot of people are concerned about and something that everyone could want. Well, Ghosty is built on Zig, which is a lower level language that's basically primed for high performing applications to say the least. And Zig has enabled Ghosty to be a really fast, really nicely performing app out of the box. Let's do a quick test with Ghosty and Alacrity and Gnome Terminal just to see how well this performs with some other popular terminal emulators. Now, I actually got this idea from a blog post by Hannah Rose. And what she did is she downloaded the Bible and used cat to read those large files and compared them between Ghosty and other terminals. So I'm going to do the same, but I want to give a shout out to Hannah Rose. This is a cool blog post and uh, she wrote some really cool stuff about Ghosty that I'm not covering here. So let's see how long it takes to cat the full Bible in Ghosty. We hit enter and oh, it's pretty quick. It's 0 0.05 seconds for the user, 0 0.063 seconds total. Really interesting. So now let's open up a different terminal. Let's look at GNOME terminal. So now with GNOME terminal, let's see how long it takes to cat the whole Bible. Oh, and at the end here, it looks like it takes 0 0.09 seconds total. So Ghosty is quite a bit quicker than GNOME terminal. And if we check out Alacrity, if we time cat, Bible in Alacrity, we can see that Alacrity takes 0 0.075 seconds total. So Ghosty is actually quite a bit faster than other terminal emulators, and I'm sure is at least comparable to any of the other modern speed improved terminal emulators out there. It's really fast. Now, Ghosty doesn't just have the basics down. It's not just performant, and it doesn't just implement what you would expect from normal terminal emulators. There's some extra stuff too. And Mitchell actually told me that he was excited that they have shaders and blooms available in Ghosty. It can render custom shaders and blooms straight in Ghosty. Now, Ghosty uses for GPU rendering OpenGL on Linux and Metal on Mac OS. So there's been a lot of attention paid to rendering with Ghosty to make sure everything runs really fast and very performant. Now, in the Ghosty Discord, we can see that this user right here actually posted a custom CRT shader and bloom shader, and it looks really interesting. So this is kind of a silly feature, but I just want to show it off because it's interesting and it's fun. Now, I copied the CRT shader from from this user from the discord and it's in my ghosty configuration so let's go to our ghosty configuration we can uncomment the bloom shader now we can exit ghosty now just reloading the config doesn't really do it here i think we have to exit and reload ghosty for our shaders to take effect and we can see here that we have this interesting like bloom shader in our terminal which is really cool and it doesn't seem to hurt any of the performance of ghosty itself Again, it takes the same amount of time to cat that huge file. So Ghosty is really great at doing fun stuff like this as well. And something that Mitchell actually told me is that he's really interested in what this does for people who are maybe colorblind and have some accessibility concerns. It isn't just for silly things. There's actually some things that you can do that actually help with accessibility for this terminal as well. So it's an important feature, not just for fun, but also for accessibility. So we can see that Ghosty is performance. It handles the default stuff that you would expect out of any terminal emulator, and it gives you some goodies too that you can use but there's something else about ghosty that i think is really interesting one of the main tenets of making ghosty in the first place was to make a terminal emulator that is you know verbatim hackable it's got to be something that people want to develop tools for and there's something in ghosty that i think is absolutely unbelievable it's called the terminal inspector now i don't know if this exists for other terminals but i have not seen this in any other terminal if i hit Control shift and i i can actually inspect what's happening in the terminal in real time this is an amazing feature of this terminal. Now you can see in right next to my face here, as I move my mouse, it updates the X and Y values of the mouse position. And we can see that like we can debug things, we can see how things are being rendered. And it's just a really cool tool to use if you're developing applications for this terminal. And while we're in here, you might have noticed something. That's right. The Kitty graphics protocol is used by Ghosty to render images in your terminal. So if you have a program like Yazi and I scroll down to some images, Ghosty actually renders these images out of the box in the terminal using Kitty's graphics protocol, which is amazing. And you can see down below this terminal, the terminal inspector is updating how many bytes are being used, how many images are being rendered, when images are loading and all that stuff. And because we're using the Kitty image rendering protocol in Ghosty, we can do one of my favorite things in any terminal ever. That's right 
we can play Doom in this terminal, baby. And you can see down below, and this is what I think is so great about the Terminal Inspector, is the Kitty graphics protocol output is updating as it renders images on the screen. Because basically this Doom thing just you know, renders image after image after image, and you can debug your output. Let's say you run into a bug while you default your application. It's available right here. I don't know if this sound is going nuts or whatever, but it's a really, really cool thing. And I think it's amazing. So at the end of the day, Ghosty is an amazing piece of technology. It has everything you would expect out of a terminal emulator. It has debugging availability with the terminal inspector. If you actually want to write some programs or some add-ons or CLI tools with Ghosty, and it has some extra things to it as well. It has the image rendering protocol from Kitty. It has everything you would want, and it's still in beta. The promise of this terminal emulator is massive. I think the sky is the limit for Ghosty. It's an amazing terminal emulator, and I'm going to be using it every day now. This is my daily driver. So be sure to subscribe and hey, thanks nerds.